I did that on our first ever show, and you just obviously didn't, you didn't, didn't get, get it. it. Yeah. yeah, I was just like, oh, he's just being a weirdo. No, dude, mm-hmm. high school musical reference. Yep. <laughs> We in. Hello. We in. On the floor. We on the floor, not in the floor. Right. We in on the floor. We are. Yeah. We're in the process of moving. They already took all our stuff out, but yeah. we still have our apartment for like two weeks. We can What's have. What's today? Like the 11th? The Something 10th? like I don't know. Yeah. We got like two weeks left. It's Saturday. So we're just sleeping on air mattresses. Sitting on the floor. Nice. But we have been watching some good movies. Other than High School Musical, we've been... We watched all three High School Musicals, but that's not what this episode is about. No. Maybe some other time. We'll save it. Mm-hmm. Since you finally saw them. Anyway, we watched... We watched a bunch of stuff lately, but we're doing this episode on Homecoming, the Amazon Prime original show, which seem, uh, seems like I would, I, would, I would classify it as a miniseries, right? Yes. It doesn't seem like something that's going to have another season. Do you not think so? I would disagree with you. You think it will? I mean, yeah. it could. Because I, th- I don't. Uh, let me rephrase it. It doesn't need another season. Okay. How much did you know about this show going into it? That Julia Roberts was in it and produced it. I knew that too. Yeah, I knew that, and was, I knew that it was about. Uh, it, and I knew it was about to do with yeah. soldiers and them coming back yeah. from uh, deployment. That was basically all. And them transitioning, like that was the number one thing that actually turned me off about this show was yeah. the fact that it was about like soldiers like, transitioning into transition. Why would I want to watch civilian? something about what I'm going through in real life? It just seemed really lame. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes things are too relatable. You know? Okay. You know? like a like a a comedy about. Two roommates who sleep on air mattresses. Yeah, it'd be too relatable. Too much. It'd be depressing. Or like Die Hard, you know? Yeah, because because we're, like we're, we're always beating up. Hans Gruber guy. is just yeah. such a likable dude. I just I see myself. I that. like the dude who tries to sell everyone out to Hans MacGruber the most. You know what I'm talking about? It's not Hans MacGruber. <laughs> Say MacGruber. MacGruber. <laughs> <laughs> Hans Gruber, Severus Hans Gruber Snape. Anyway. All right, so Homecoming. homecoming. I was I was persuaded by my girlfriend. Shout out to Kate. Oh, hi, Kate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in order to, to, to watch this TV mm-hmm. show because she really mm-hmm. liked it. Mm-hmm. Um, my turning point for me to like get over my little like stupid hump of not liking it and starting accepting myself, watching my it. affinity for watching it was – this is basically Twilight Zone. This is a very so it, in, the, in the way that Did it's you, sold. In you the way learned that, that before you saw it. No, uh, during the course of watching it, okay. like probably like yeah. second or third episode in, I was like, "Oh, they are like selling this as if it's a Twilight Zone." So let me tell you, who I can episode. give some credit to that too, because we're gonna do some deets here. Right. The dude whose name we kept laughing at because it's weird. Sam Esmail, S Esmail. Email with an S. Email with an S in it is the director of every single, all uh, 10 episodes. Mm-hmm. He is the creator of Mr. Robot. Okay. Which, which I've never seen. I literally made a joke about Mr. Robot where we were watching it. Because there was that one shot where he was running He's with called, the hoodie yeah, there was and a guy it looked like up, a Mr. Yeah. Robot shot. Um, I think uh, Mike uh, Bloomberg and Eli Horowitz are credited as the creators. They don't even have pictures on IMDb. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, we talked about starring Julia Roberts, uh, Bobby Cannavale. Kind of Bobby Cannavale. <laughs> See, I, I want to say Bobby Cannavale. It's just he's so Italian. Yeah, that you want to do. That. And he, yeah, he he just looks so Italian. Uh, and Stephane, so Italian. James. Stephane James. Stephane James. <laughs> uh, Stephane James, who is in the new movie If Beale Street Could Talk, which you also just saw. Uh, and I'm pretty sure that he also played Jesse Owens in the movie. Sure. Yeah. Who's the Jesse one with Owens? Uh, the, the Olympian? Uh, oh the, yeah, the race. Had, I think it's called. Yeah, it's called yeah. Race. Um, and it had Jason Sudeikis in it. Yeah, Shay Wiggum. Quigum? Quigum? Uh-huh. He plays the glasses boy. <laughs> His name is Tom in the show, but he just... Those glasses kill me. <laughs> They're great. Uh, also, uh, Sissy Spacek was in it. Mm. But that's basically your main cast there. Yeah, okay. Uh, have we done enough uh, uh, prep work as far as explaining what the show is? This show is a show about a... Uh, company i guess you could say mm-hmm. like a, a privately funded but gov- government like supported company mm-hmm. who is goal is to help 
soldiers coming back from overseas uh, get over PTSD. They're trying to cure PTSD. Mm-hmm. It's kind of a, a aggressive yeah. treatment thing. And they don't and even we, really address the fact that it's specifically PTSD yeah. that they're going after. It, at first, they, they're trying to uh, they, sell it as yeah. a transitional, transitional program, program, which is something that actually exists in the military, which mm-hmm. is one of the reasons why I didn't like it as much. Yeah. Or the, the idea of it, the premise kind of turned me off because I was like, I've gone through Too taps. Real. I've gone through taps before. Too real Navy, for me. Which is a, a literal you. transition program. Yeah. Um, which, but it was like transitional program and then it was like, this is what this show is. It's like the next step up. Yeah. yeah. You're doing very aggressive like drug treatments and we find out halfway through it that they're actually trying to completely erase the bad memories of military and make it so they can send these soldiers back out. Mm. They're basically brainwashing and, them. Yeah. Instead of making them uh, better for their civilian lives, they're literally just trying to cure their PTSD in order to redistribute yep. them out into deployment because that's the cheapest thing that the military yep. could do is you know not retrain new soldiers and just keep sending the same ones back out. Yeah, it's messed up. Uh-huh. Now, like one thing I enjoyed about uh, this show is that like it had more of a slow reveal than it did a mm-hmm. quick one. This isn't like uh, th- there's no like Star Wars moments here where you're like, oh, Luke is my father. Yeah. Dude, that spoilers. Kind of- this isn't spoilers. Star Wars. Sorry. If you Sorry. don't know that already, though, screw you. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah. And that was something that uh, the memory deletion mm-hmm. thing like that like sort of element in the plot you find out pretty early on because you yeah. find out that julia roberts has lost her memory who's yeah. and julia roberts is playing a counselor for this program yeah. she's More, like the head of the program mm-hmm. at the facility she has a mm-hmm. boss who she answers to but he's never there that's bobby bobby Carnaval. <laughs> um i think the show is good for like to get that i liked it i enjoyed watching yes. it um, it is pretty, it's kind of a slow burn kind of thing. It's kind of noirish almost. In yes. parts. The thing I think that I liked more than anything, more than like any performances or writing or story in general, I just think technically speaking, it's this technically very proficient. cool. Yes. It's very interesting the way they do it. Um, flat, they do, they they kind of come across as flash forwards and they do this thing where they, they do like a narrow shot that almost looks like it was shot on mm-hmm. an iPhone in terms of the. For any uh, for anybody it? that knows uh, like uh, cinematography techniques as well as like aspect ratios, That's it. they have a very narrow aspect ratio. That it, if if you don't know anything about cinematography um, or video cameras or anything, like it looks like a, an iPhone camera shot that's shot vertically yeah. instead of horizontally. So there's the big black bars on either side. Yeah, and then those shots are all kind of faded color wise a little bit. You know, mm-hmm. They're not as they're not as vibrant, mm-hmm. and they play creepy music yes. twilight zone music yeah, twilight, during those scenes the, the the music and a lot of the uh the composition of the shots made me realize oh this is fucking twilight zone. Mm-hmm. um that's what they're trying to sell it as yeah uh the the reveal you know like the the big secret uh that they were holding on to wasn't as bizarre as a majority of twilight zone stuff yeah you know like it seems like something that could actually happen in real life yeah it's i never not... i never was like shook by any reveals i was like yeah true. that it, or, or organically it makes sense for the story that's true kind of where it seemed like we were going um and yeah but the whole time that you're watching the show you're seeing uh these flashbacks right where everything's full frame and then you see this like really this really narrow aspect ratio shots which are the flash forwards or mm-hmm. whatever uh, which is the present day julia roberts yeah. uh, she for, is forgetting things it's four she years remember. after the time she worked there mm-hmm. and you're hearing uh, uh about how she lost her job or she left mm-hmm. it and she doesn't remember she doesn't ever, remember any, see i anything. thought that was cool because at first when when in the very first episode when <sighs> when glasses boy comes and talks to her, it seems like she's just hiding something. Mm-hmm. And then the slowly reveal that she literally just has no idea what yeah, happened. Cause she keeps saying, I don't know to this. She just tells him she doesn't remember people. There's this like that. detective character. Basically, he works for the DOD IGO inspe- or something. The, the DOD IG, which is the department yeah. department of defense inspector general. That. And, uh, he was a fucking really cool character. Yeah, I, I really him. liked him. He's someone who is, he's literally your detective for this noir thriller yeah. that you're about to watch. Uh, but he's also um, someone who's represented as like the cog in the machine. Mm-hmm. Um, someone who he's powerless. Is just, he's powerless in the, the face of this bu- bureaucracy that yeah. he works for, which I thought was really interesting. And he's also like kind of useless. Kind of. Like his, his hunch is right. Right. 
and he's determined enough to follow it and get to the bottom of it. Right. But at the end of the day, there's nothing he can do about it. Yeah. And he's like a goober. Like he's falling down and like, yeah, the, like the, he's the, just like, there's uh there's certain things that happen in homecoming that like sort of distance itself from a, uh, a twilight zone esque uh, tone. Mm-hmm. There's like a lot of like really subtle physical comedy, mm-hmm. um, like stuff where he'll like be sitting in a waiting room and the couch is yeah, like, the, too big for yeah, him, and you know? He so he's, so he has it, to yeah. like sink into it and he can't get comfortable. Like it's almost like they were constantly trying to get, across not only through dialogue and performance but through interacting with the environment that this guy is powerless right. to to fix anything that's going yeah. on yeah yeah um yeah uh it it is really good um i would say that the best thing is the technical yeah. proficiency of it uh, aside from the writing and the performances i think they're fucking great too um but it's uh, interesting when you see people who are technically proficient enough to integrate it into um, the, it's into the, the story, into the story. Yeah. Right. Um, the shot and, where, where Julia Roberts gets her memory back is one of the coolest shots. Like not just in the show, but just in general, like maybe like the whole year. I mean, I had told you that I saw it on the Twitter feed of, of for one perfect shot. They put it in their like top 50 mm-hmm. shots of the year or something. Yeah. So where the aspect ratio goes from like narrow as ab- she remembers her past. Yes. So yeah, she gets this, uh, this audio trigger. Mm-hmm. She hears a bird that used to be out, used to squawk yeah. outside of her office all the time, this pelican and it squawked. And as soon as it squawked, all of her memories started to come back mm-hmm. and that aspect ratio just mm-hmm. slid out. And it looked, she, looked like, a, it looks super cool. It's almost like a zoom, mm-hmm. but where she's the focus or the background is weird. It's yeah. very cool. Yeah. Um, and then they reused it again in reverse later. Yeah. Which as, cool. where they brought back it wasn't as like jarring version. though like the first time you're like oh that's really cool mm-hmm. um yeah it, it's just a really uh technically interesting way in order to display someone re- remembering something which is something yeah. that is really hard to show visually mm-hmm. and uh you could just i you could tell that their idea for the aspect ratios and fucking with that kind of stuff was directly off of that scene mm-hmm. i think that like they reverse engineered they're like okay how are we going to make this visually captive yeah how can we go beyond just julia roberts showing it in her performance or or us saying something how can uh-huh. we do it so that you'd are triggered just by watching. Like yeah. you could be watching homecoming on silent yeah. and you would be like, you would have an idea of what just happened. Yeah. Um, um, uh, I really liked, yeah, I, I liked the, the character Shea Wiggum played as well. Tom, the detective guy. Um, I thought Julia Roberts was really good. Actually, I thought the main cast was all really good. I thought Julia Roberts, Bobby Cannavale and Stefan James. Were There's all like, do you really have good. anything bad to say about the show? Nothing bad. It's just, it's one of those things where it's like, this will never be my favorite show just because it's not my favorite type of thing. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? But I would highly recommend it to anybody. Yeah. Uh, the, like, there's a part of me that kind of wants there to be like that, that one note reveal. Um, but I think that the, the slow reveal and like understanding what the, the, what this world is comprised of mm-hmm. um, made me. I don't know. I feel like that's just as impressive. Yeah. Um, instead of just having like one secret and you're going to, you know, hide. The and they're able to like, the entire they're time able to keep you. It. Um, even though you have a feeling of what's coming, they kind of keep you on the edge of your seat for it still. You know what I mean? With that slow reveal. Yes. You think, you know, it's coming, but you have to make sure. Mm-hmm. Um, I think maybe the only thing would be, it maybe didn't have to be 10 episodes. Maybe true. Probably could have been eight. It could have been trimmed down. Yeah, maybe a little bit. I feel like there was like one episode where I was like kind of like felt like it was kind of plotting a little bit. Uh, I think it was the one where um, was it the one where Bobby Cannavale first meets her in the flash forwards? Maybe I don't remember. Where he <sighs> yeah. pretends to be someone else. Yeah, he, that was messed up though. Like mm-hmm. that was like this dude's going deep. Yeah. I guess you're right about a, a second season, especially because there's so many unanswered questions. So okay, so this is my uh, my take on there being because I was I had that same thought. Oh, one more thing about it before okay. we talk about a second season. I thought another thing that actually added to it a lot, even though we just mentioned it could be shorter. It being 30 minute episodes made it super palatable. True. Because each episode is so kind of slow and deliberate. Yeah. Them only being 30 minutes makes it easier to watch it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's. Yeah. But yeah, season two. 
So far. season two, I had that same thought as far as like, well, like how would they even have a uh, a season two to this show? Mm-hmm. Um, I think that the that they didn't go into the Geist industry yeah. at all. So Geist was like the company that was uh, funding the, everything. Well, that was um, being contracted by the government in order to conduct this program. Yeah. Um, and at the end of the show, they sort of take Bonav- Bobby Cannavale's character out of it. He gets punished. And his assistant, basically. like Yeah, that was kind of weird. It was kind of strange, right? I was, like, like, a yo, receptionist. I was like, yo, that's how you promote? Yeah. What kind of company is this? <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, I thought it was like that scene was happening and I was like, is she Geist? But I don't think that's what I was waiting for. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like maybe like, oh, she was, the she's boss been the like undercover time. the yeah, whole time. And I was like, weird. yeah. Uh, but yeah, basically she gets promoted and fires Bombi kind of valet and, mm-hmm. and, and they use him as a scapegoat scapegoat. Yeah. And, uh, as a, a rogue employee mm-hmm. that, uh, did this program without their knowledge. Um, but, as, I don't know if you watch. There's a, like an end credit sequence after, and I only saw a little bit of it. Oh, I don't. Think but it's I, literally just. I think I missed it. it but it's literally just her, st- like at that desk. Her alone. meaning Julia Roberts or no, 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 no. the receptionist. The yeah, the, okay. the receptionist that basically fires. Oh, I Bobby missed Kennedy that. Okay. Uh, as I was like coming the back out, I, I, like I saw this screen mm. and it was fucking. Well, because that's another thing they do. As the credits play, they keep playing a scene. They let a scene linger. Yeah. Over the credits. Yeah, there's like... It, it, it's They almost make you sit in whatever emotion they just tried to get out and of. It's all, and it's always kind of awkward. Yeah. I don't know if... It, yeah. th- there's like an awkward humor to it. Uh, I think like the, the best one was the one where Julia Roberts was breaking down. Uh, that was like the most... That was the one where I like wanted to sit and watch the yeah. whole thing because she was just Emotive. going in. Yeah. yeah. Um. But uh, yeah, it's not always emotional. No. Like like the, there's a uh, one shot that they use uh, of just the pelican on her yeah. desk. Yeah, it's just like and it's a just really, standing there. It's, it's just a silly shot. Yeah, and they do that for the entire end credit sequence. Um, but yeah, I think that they can go more into Geist and yeah, what for sure Geist they is could. trying to do. I, I almost are wonder... they going to? Because I don't like. Are they going to completely dismantle this program? Do they really? I don't know if they already did. Or they moved, if anything, they moved. Because mm-hmm. it seems like Geist is that, that giant building. Mm-hmm. And then Homecoming was just a subsidiary kind of deal. Well, uh, the, uh, the one character's mom, Walter Cruz's mom, mm-hmm. uh, talked about how Geist was basically like they're... They, they do ma- a bunch of stuff. They have like soap. And, and, yeah, they make shampoos, yeah. uh, stuff like that. Um, yeah, I would want to go more to that. Are did they going like to... you like her character? It's weird because like she seems like the one character that like always knew that something was like yeah. she knew she, she knew, knew something was wrong. Yeah. But in the context of the story, like how the fuck did she know? That yeah. She just is wrong? a very untrusting person. It seems like. Yeah. I, don't know, I, I feel like you were asking earlier about weak points. I think maybe that character might've been the weakest. I don't, I didn't dislike it or anything, mm-hmm. but just maybe the weakest. Mm-hmm. Where I was like, uh, I wish she had a little bit more reason as to why mm-hmm. she distrusted everything. I wish she was a little more likable. Yeah. She just never, there was never a scene with her where we established like any sort of uh, like genuine quality from her. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Everything was always her just being yeah. suspicious or being upset. Yeah. Even the first time we ever meet her on the Skype call, she's like getting mad at her son for not coming home. Yeah. And it's like, he's, going through a program to help with PTSD. Why would you be mad about that as a mother? Mm. It's yeah. weird. Yeah. If you could take like a, just a smidge of Stefan James charisma Dude. and put it. Stefan James is super like, we haven't talked about him enough. No, I was, uh, yeah, I wanted to bring him up. He is just like, he could be, it's just seems where he's having a conversation mm. and he's so likable. Yeah. It's uh yeah, it's a, it's a really good quality to have. It's almost like uh Sam Rockwell kind of. Mm-hmm. We're like in a, any normal, just just talking, and he just comes across as so genuine yeah. and likable. Well, and it's like uh, there was a pseudo, I mean, like romantic element yeah, for sure. Uh, but uh, between for sure Julia Roberts and I Walter would say Cruz. more than pseudo. It was, it was not physical. <laughs> There was yeah, there was no there was no manifestation. They of never this acted romance. on their feelings. Yeah, essentially. yeah, like there was yeah, there was no physical manifestation of this mm-hmm. romance. But it was for sure there. Yeah, they were sure. talking about going on a road trip, and, yep. and they were constantly like, moving flirting to a with tiny each other. town in Northern California. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, but it, it's something that could be really hard to pull off, mm -hmm. which I felt like Stefan James and the, and as well as the writing director, yeah. um, was able to do because Julia Roberts is so much older yeah. than Stefan James. Um, but yeah, that dude's going to blow up. Yeah. He's really good. Uh, yeah. He was just in Bill Street, which me and Kay saw mm -hmm. last night too. Um, thumbs up. It's really good. Really good. Uh, yeah. I'd, I'd like to see more of, I don't know what he, well, I can look. Let's see if he's got anything coming up. Stefan James. Stefan James. Oh, he's in Selma too. Mm, something called American Dinner and something called 17 Bridges. So he's got stuff coming. That's okay. cool. Uh, yeah, he's really likable. Uh, Julie Roberts was awesome. Yeah. I feel like you could tell through her performance that this was a project she really cared about. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And well, and she was also like, she was like an executive producer on. And she it. wasn't just featured in it as an actress. Like yeah, she was, she was you the can, lead. Well, she was the, she was the lead, uh, but she was also involved uh, produ production yeah. wise. Um, and you can always like tell uh, when. People are that involved. Invested, in, yeah. In, in production. That, mm -hmm. uh, um, I think that's pretty much covers it. Yeah. I don't, yeah, I don't really have anything to say about it. Yeah, yeah. Cool. So Homecoming on Amazon Prime. Check it out. It's real good. This has been <laughs> The Chris and Kyle Show. He's Chris. I'm Kyle. Find him chrismichaelstott.com for his website check out his scripts uh, Chris Michael Stott on Instagram I am Davinwell25 Twitter and Instagram the show The Chris and Kyle Show on YouTube Spotify Apple Podcasts all the podcasting things uh, Facebook Instagram TCAX Pod on Twitter no poll this month because in two weeks we'll have our Oscar episode but first next week will be True Detective Season 1 mm -hmm. part one of a three part series of us checking out True Detective in honor of season three airing sometime right now. I think it might have started already. Mahershala. <laughs> it's my sign out. I'm going to start doing that every episode. Yeah. I'm going to say we out. I'm going to say Mahershala. I really hope you don't. <laughs> no, I'm not. I pray to God that, that you do not. That would be dumb. Uh, yeah. So come back for that. It's going to be cool. Uh, I think we out. We out. Stay weird. Stay weird.